Hello and welcome to Biology Explained. Today we're going to be looking at control of blood glucose as part of the GCSE revision series. Now blood glucose in the body is controlled as part of a homeostasis mechanism and as is we need to know for the uh, other things in the GCSE syllabus, homeostasis is the control of your internal environment and this happens in your body in a variety of ways. One of these ways is by controlling the levels of blood glucose in your blood. And that requires two hormones, insulin and glucagon, which control blood glucose levels. Eating foods which contain carbohydrates puts glucose into the blood from the gut because the carbohydrates get broken down by enzymes in your gut into glucose or other types of simple sugars. And then basically what you want to do is either use that glucose in your blood for respiration, which is normally happens with your metabolism, or if there's too much glucose, you know, you've had a big meal and you need to store it, some of the glucose can be stored as glycogen in the liver and in the muscles for use later. However, the levels of glucose in the body have to be kept steady. The changes are constantly monitored and controlled by the pancreas, and which then uses releases the hormones insulin and glucagon in what we call a negative feedback cycle to be able to control the levels of glucose in the blood so it's kept relatively steady. So first let's look at what happens when our blood glucose level is too high, such as we've had a big meal of lots of sugar and we need to do something with this glucose uh, in our body. And so if our blood has got lots of glucose going in it, so our blood glucose concentration is very high, the pancreas will detect this because it constantly has blood circling and dating through it and it's able to monitor the glucose levels in the blood. If it sees that the glucose levels is too high, it secretes an enzyme, the enzyme insulin. And then this insulin basically causes your cells to take up more glucose from the blood and take that into the liver and muscle cells where it's then converted into glycogen, which is a storage molecule of glucose. And once this is stored, your blood glucose levels will go down and you've basically achieved equilibrium again. So you've gone up in a peak and you've gone back down to the kind of maintaining homeostatic integrity. So you've, you've spiked and then your body's release enzymes to control it and brought it back down to its normal levels. That's what a negative feedback cycle is. If something spikes over the norm, something happens to bring it back down to the norm. And same if it goes under. And that's different from a positive feedback loop where it keeps getting bigger and bigger exponentially. But that's for another time. A negative feedback loop, if something spikes above the norm, something will happen to bring that back in line. And that's basically what's happening here with blood glucose concentrations. Negative feedback cycles tend to happen in homeostasis all the time. And this is one great example. So we've looked at how blood, what happens with blood glucose levels when they're too high. Insulin is released by the pancreas and that causes glucose to be taken up and turned into glycogen for storage. Now we need to just have a look at what happens if our blood glucose levels are too low. And that's basically a similar kind of concept we talked about earlier with insulin being added, but this time a different enzyme is used. So if there's blood, is if the pancreas detects blood with too little glucose, it will release glucagon, which is another enzyme. Uh, so that will be secreted by the pancreas. This glucagon is recognized by cells, which causes the cells to release more glucose into the blood. So it breaks down the glucose storage molecule, glycogen, into glucose, which is then released into blood to allow it to be used in respiration by your cells. And therefore the blood glucose concentration increases. So it's a similar kind of negative feedback loop as the insulin to uh, glucose levels too high concept, but that goes up and then back down while gluc glucose being too low, it's like dipped and then comes back up. So as long as you think about negative feedback cycles as going above or below the norm and then coming back, it should be good. And so I hope you've enjoyed the video and have an understanding of how controlling blood glucose occurs in the body and how the two enzymes, insulin and glucagon, Go about this to make sure blood glucose concentration is kept constant and at the same level throughout and to stop the glucose going too high or too low. 